All right, guys, welcome back. This is Eric here with Iraq Veteran 8888. Uh, today, we've got another pistol review for you. Uh, this one is a loaner from Moss. Uh, we're just borrowing it. This is a A-Rex, Rex01. Uh, I know that's a mouthful. Basically, what we're talking here is a SIG 226 or SIG style uh, gun. It's basically a copy of a SIG 226, more or less. Um, very, very similar system. This is brand new in the box. It's never been fired. I'm gonna go ahead and pull it apart and we're just gonna swab the barrel. All right, let's see if I can get this figured out. I gotta get that, well, come on. Gotta get that hinge right there like I want it. There we go. Alloy frame, pretty uh, decent quality construction. Looks to be pretty well made. Ambidextrous magazine release, which is kind of cool. Kind of a big old fat frame on it. Uh, which may be your uh, style of cool or may not. It's up to you. You got a Picatinny rail system, nice, generous, and large and full range. Uh, locking surface on the slide for it to ride in should make it nice and accurate. We've got a uh, kind of a modified style of uh, browning recoil system. Pretty good quality uh, work on the slide. Looks pretty nice. Forward and rearward opposed cocking serrations. Loaded chamber indicator, three dot sights, pretty standard fare. We're gonna swap the barrel out because there's probably preservatives in the barrel. And guys, when we do these videos, when we borrow these things, we bring them right out to the range and we, we go right to work with them. No bull crap, okay? Um, you know, I've, I've never been that much of a fan of the 226. Uh, SIG makes some wonderful guns. And basically, my first initial thought on this was, hey, you know, it's basically a 226 copy. And that's essentially what it is. Uh, one thing we can see is the barrel feed ramp is a nice polish, looks really good. And when you look at it in the frame there, they look like they blended that really well. They seem to be well fitted. That looks nice. Standard cut rifling. Pretty standard fare. Looks like we got a right hand twist barrel. All right, we're gonna put the gun back together. Doesn't appear to be any real heavy preservatives on the uh, slide at all, so we're not gonna worry about wiping that down. Goes back together pretty much just like any other uh, type of pistol there. All right, we are gonna shoot the gun. See if I can hold my mouth right and get this thing back together. All right, lock that to the rear. Double single action. Single action trigger is pretty decent. Double actions, pretty heavy. Manual safety. One thing I can say right out the gate, I'm not crazy about the angle of that safety and the way that it flips up. I don't like that one bit. It seems like if you're carrying that, that would bump off really easy. And it also didn't really take a lot of force to bump that safety off. So anyway, let's shoot the gun. See how it works. I've only got two mags. No, the mags don't come loaded. We loaded those. All right, let's shoot the gun, see how it does. It does have a nice balance to it. It is a little bit big in my hand. Let's give it a few shots here, see how it does. Remember guys, we've never shot this. This is completely new out of the box. Ambidextrous magazine release. I'm gonna pass these mags back. Mag Fury. Yeah, not too bad. I do like the uh, kind of deliberate, uh, you know, angle of the uh, heel, the kind of bobtail on the heel of the uh, frame is really nice. You do have a lanyard point right here if you wanna mount a, a lanyard on it. Looks like a hard plastic grips. It is an alloy frame, like I mentioned. That trigger guard does seem rather large, big and blocky. I'm not necessarily a fan of that. 
The rail system, it does look like it has a nice amount of real estate if you want to put accessories on it and things like that. This is just one of those guns that, you know, we were digging around at Moss and I thought this would be something cool to check out. Um, doesn't seem to be too terribly uh, inaccurate, if I can do my part. Now, it was literally my first mag out of the gun. Now, is that thing hitting to the right for you now? A little bit, yeah. Yeah. It uh, stacks them right in there as long as I do my part. Um, not too terrible. I'm gonna shoot it a little bit more. Um, the trigger's real nice. It's got a nice single action trigger squeeze. The double action, I'm certainly not a fan of. It's very, very heavy. Let's run a couple double action. See how it does. I've never been a huge fan of the 226. Um, I have a 220 and a 226. And I have to say, they're not really my favorite range guns. That's not to say they're not good, and that's not to say they won't work for you. It's just me personally, I'm not a huge fan of them. It's more of a collectible thing for me. All right, let's try the double action. I shoot it better in double action than I do in single action. Yeah, can't say I'm a fan. All right. The gun is printing to the right a little bit for me. We'll let Chad shoot it here in a moment and just see how he fares. We just thought this was something that'd be cool to kind of check out. A lot of people have been asking us about uh, the A-Rex, Rex Zero. And you know, I'm, from what I understand, they're supposed to be priced pretty reasonable. I know SIGs already on their own are not really that incredibly cheap to begin with. Um, my opinion is if you're gonna buy a 226, buy a dang 226. You know what I mean? I, I, unless this gun is just like half the price of a SIG, then why not just buy a SIG? I mean, I don't know. I guess just coming from me, it's just not, I'm not a huge fan of the 226. I own one just because they're neat. And I, I do kind of like them just as a collectible and, and they are kind of fun to shoot. I've never really considered them to be like as accurate as some of the other guns that are out there. For me personally, that's just my opinion for what it's worth. Um, I, I can imagine as a defensive unit, this is the full size. They do make a compact uh, on this particular gun. Uh, if you were looking for a defensive unit and it's something you wanted to look at and maybe you have humongous hands or something, sure, that, that might work for you. Um, I'm going to try to take out some sodas here. The gun is printing just slightly to the right for me. made short work of those sodas. I mean, that's about 15 yards away. For a defensive unit, I can't really think of anything else it needs to be able to do. If that's something you were looking at this particular handgun for, it might be something for you. And guys, remember, this is the first rounds out of, the, uh, out of this gun for me, so could just be a learning curve.
not too terrible in the accuracy department at all. Um, I'll say uh, it is favoring slightly to the right for me, but again, you know, we, what was that, steel case? That was the steel case uh, Winchester. Okay, so that's Winchester steel mm -hmm. case. What was the brass case stuff we're running, just 124 Freedom? Yeah, 124 Freedom, yeah. All right, good deal. All right, here's some steel case Winchester ammo. This stuff's pretty hot, actually. I noticed earlier the report, this is 115, right? That's 115, yeah. it's yeah. pretty hot ammo. Well, we were having issues with it in the Glock mags. It was a little bit too yeah, long on the overall one. It is. Thing, so just want to see how we'll do in that gun. Well, it worked. You didn't load the mag. Oh, crap. <laughs> crap. That's okay. Well, I'm just, I was looking at the ejection pattern, too. Yeah, yeah. Real consistent. Yeah. Um, I feel like I'd probably need a little bit more time behind this gun to be, like, incredibly proficient with it. But um, not terrible at all. I think the two-tone is kind of cool in terms of colors. You know, that is a, a nice little nod there. Uh, kind of that nice bronze color, which is kind of cool. Um, I dig it. I think it's cool. You know, um... I, I don't think that I'd be rushing out to uh, buy one myself. That's just me. Uh, this gun is a loner. You know, Michelle was nice enough to just let us take it out and uh, run a few rounds through it. It's one of those things that I guess if you're a collector of these type of guns, I mean, this is Sylvanian, which is kind of cool. You know, some people like the, the weird kind of quirky foreign-made guns. Let's see. Home of Polonor Tactical. Yeah, those goofballs. <laughs> but, but, yeah, exactly. But, um... Another thing to consider, you know, at one point we did a video on the uh, the Strike One, excuse me, the Arsenal Strike One, and uh, you know that particular gun is a pretty dang neat gun. Yeah, I went into that review, not really, well, it's not really a review. We're just kind of shooting the gun, but we went into that video kind of thinking, oh, okay, well, what is this thing, you know? And it turns out it's actually a really cool gun to shoot. So I, I always try to go into these videos with an open mind and just try to just kind of have fun. So. Uh, yeah, I mean, it, it's got definitely potential for accuracy. I'm sure Chad will shoot it a lot better than I do, but um, the gun is a little big in my hand. That's one thing I will say. I, I'm not crazy about that big, beefy grip. Uh, definitely not a fan of that. You know, it, it does have these kind of cuts on the back. I guess gives it a little bit more grippy texture. And on the front of the frame, you got some nice little cuts there. Um, it's not terrible. Loaded chamber indicator is doing its job. Just kind of poking up there just to let you know you got a round in the chamber. All right, a couple just more rounds here. Seems to be real reliable so far. I'm getting some real sporadic accuracy. Like it'll put a couple of rounds like right in one hole and then it'll open up the group to the right. And I don't know if it's me or if it's the gun or what. I have no idea. Yep, I'm consistently printing this gun to the right. So the big indicator there, and granted, this is right out of the box, but the big indicator will definitely be if Chad's groups also favor to the right, then we'll know that obviously out of the box it's an adjustment thing and just needing to push the sights. I'm gonna punch out a little bit longer range. Maybe I can hit something with this thing. There we go. Well, I was dead on the money. I mean, the thing is, you're not gonna shoot any of these kind of extended stupid ranges with this thing anyway, but it's kind of cool to know you can kind of poke back there a little bit. Yeah. 
not too terrible. Gun probably shoot a lot better. Um, not too bad at all. About 40 yards back there. Not terrible. Mm. Try some of that pro match up front. That stuff usually groups pretty well. Pro match? All yeah. right. Well, since we're on the long range kick, let's see if I can plug a few in out to 75 yards. Just for fun. Way further than you're ever going to shoot this thing. Printing right on the bottom of the gong. Yep. Oh yeah, right where I was aiming. Not too shabby. Definitely showing some good accuracy potential. All right, I'm going to pick up the pace just a little bit and try some. Like you mentioned, this is the uh, the, uh, the pro match, right? That's the pro match. Shoot, shoot a group on that D28 up there on the left. Just I want to see if it'll do any better for you. Not bad. That stuff's printing left. Not bad at all. <laughs> you, did you load more of it up? Yeah, that's the same. All right, I'm going to try another group. It's not bad. You know, it's always a learning curve with every gun, guys. Every gun is different. And this is just my initial exposure to this gun. So we're not trying to like garner an opinion or develop an opinion. All we're trying to do is just show you guys what this gun's about. The same way anybody would do if they went and bought it and took it out and used it. Yep. I think I shoot pistols better when I just go for it. I'm not really big on trying to take my time and shoot groups, but let's, let's pick up the pace a little bit. Oh yeah, not bad. All right, I'm gonna keep picking up the pace. One more mag and then I'm gonna let Chad shoot the gun a bit. Um, well, thank you, sir. I, I have a feeling Chad will probably outshoot me, which he normally does on handguns. But uh, we're just going to have some fun. I mean, as, for, for a defensive unit, definitely acceptable accuracy. I wouldn't call it a target pistol by any stretch of the imagination, but that's just my take. Oh, yeah. That's a little bit more my style, just wrapping them out of there instead of trying to play games. Baby it. To play fairy games. <laughs> Not bad. Um, definitely cool. I can say that I don't like the safety one bit. I do not like the, the position of that safety and the a large amount of throw that it's got. And it's also not very positive. I can see where that safety would get bumped off really easy. Now, granted, if you carry them with the, uh, with the hammer down, then uh, absolutely, it does have a decocking mechanism. So you would really carry this gun with the hammer down and the safety off anyway. Okay, so I think having the safety is kind of a moot point because if the, if the hammer's back and you're carrying it cocked and locked and the safety's on, in my opinion, that's just, you kind of open yourself up for a little bit there because that safety's not positive at all. Uh, the frame is robust, it's very rigid. Uh, the fit and finish on the gun seems to be pretty dang excellent. Uh, 
I wish I could do my part and really show you what the gun can do, but we're going to let Chad shoot it. I do like the sights. Nice, simple three-dot uh, profile there. I don't really see it being a uh, detrimental issue at all. I mean, the gun seems pretty excellent in terms of quality uh, of manufacture. Um, definitely neat. So we're going to repaint all the steel, let Chad have a go, and let's see if maybe... And the reason we get two shooters on these videos, especially when we're just pulling a gun right out of the box like this, is because we want to see if Chad gets the same type of issue that I do. Now, if he's printing to the right, then we'll know that the sights are a little bit off. Now, if he's hitting dead on the money everything he's shooting at, then we'll know that it's just me being a dummy. So that's how it goes. We're going to let Chad have a go, see what happens. All right, so, uh, so far the Rex Zero One is um, looking a little less than subpar, but... I'll give it a shot and see what uh, see what the story is. One thing that I do not like right out of the gate, like Eric, I don't, I'm not a fan of the safety. I don't like that at all. Double single action is perfectly fine with me. Um, but I, I lock the slide to the rear and I push the decocking mechanism as well as the slide stop up and it barely catches the slide, like barely. The, the stop will pop up, but then as the slide comes back forward, it kind of puts pressure on it. It's, if you look on the inside of it, it's just this long angular bar and it kind of goes, mm, it kind of flexes this way. I mean, that's not very positive to me. If I push the slide stop up and I like rack the slide to the rear real quick, it should just lock, not like that, see? I'm pushing that thing up. It takes there a it lot goes. of force to get it to seat in there. Yeah, I'm not happy with that as far as just an operation of the firearm itself. Uh, just one observation that I see there. I'm gonna take a few offhand shots and uh, see where it prints for me. And I've got the hog saddle sitting to the side. I'm gonna pull it out and I'm gonna rest on it and try maybe some of the Pro Match and some of the 124 grain freedom and see if maybe I can get it to group a little bit better than Eric did. We're just gonna take a few shots You'll and probably see group happens. it better than I did just anyway. Maybe, I don't know. So we'll see. There's a part of me that wants to see it print to the right for you, so I know I'm not screwing up. All right. All right, I'm going to shoot this target about 12 yards away here. Do your thing, man. Aim for the bolt. Not bad at all. That was not me. That was like some weird flyer with either the gun or the ammo. I'm telling you. Dude. See what I mean? Yeah, like it'll it shoot some, two groups. Kind of odd flyers there. All right, yeah. so. So you shot, the initial group you shot is the same size as mine, but yours strung uh, vertically and mine strung horizontally. Yep. All right, I'm going to take a few shots from the hog saddle here, a little bit further range and see what happens. That way i got a good aiming point. Now I might take some shots offhand at this range too. This is uh, 15 yards, so aim for the bolt back there again. I mean, not terrible, you know, but still that one weird not really flyer much up there. Of an improvement, man. Mm -mm, let's see. Yeah, that's weird. You aiming for the bolt? Yeah. See what I mean? Like, see, you're stringing vertically. Here you go. Oh, thanks. And I was stringing horizontally, which really, if it's horizontal, is probably my fault. But that's the gun. Oh, that, that is not you. Let's see. That's weird, like, I mean, I've got that nice tight cluster in there and I'm not really doing anything different with the gun, but maybe, uh, let me try some of that 147. I got some Pro okay. Match right here. 
Well, let's try some different varieties of ammo too. And I'll load you up another mag of that. So try that and yeah. I'll load you some Pro Match. All right. We're just shooting. You guys are along for the ride. Yep. All right, let's see. Okay, that went like high left. Yeah, I'm telling you, dude. Kind of all over the place. Yeah. Right, let me try some of that Winchester after this too. Yep, I got you. Try the Hawks out one more time. Here. I'm your Huckleberry. You want my Huckleberry? Oh. <laughs> all right. Let me. Let me aim. All right. So I'm aiming at the bottom of the plate where it's clean. And I'm just I gonna say you and I are getting about the same overall accuracy out of the gun. Pretty much. All right. So I'm kind of cutting the bottom of the plate there. Let's see what happens. I think, too, this thing gets hot and it starts stringing all over the place. Good grief. <laughs> what in the world That's is going on with this thing? Is that some of the Winchester? Uh, yes. So all we're right. on the Winchester steel case. Good grief. This is some pretty hot stuff. Yeah, it is pretty warm, no doubt. Seems to be reliable though. It has been so far. You had that one issue, were you maybe thumbing the slide stop or something? Or? I don't know, the slide stop was uh, acting a little goofy for me. I mean, that's a nice group there. Just trying to wrap them out of there and see what happens. Let's see. I mean, the gun isn't a match gun, for sure. I mean, personally, I wouldn't carry a gun of this size for defensive carry. About the biggest thing I would carry is like a Glock 19 or like one of the new Smith & Wesson like M&P, you know, compacts. You know? Sure. The like 19 size guns or the 15 round mags. Yeah. I mean, I'm or not a fan. maybe a CZP-10 or something oh, like yeah. that. Oh, yeah, for nice sure. Gun. Well, even a 75, really, but yeah. I mean, I mean, if you're going to carry a gun like that, you might as well carry a 75, in my opinion. All right, I'm going to take a few longer range shots. I think I shot these up close far enough, or long enough. Let's see. Okay, gopher. Okay. Very reliable unit. All right, let's see. Popper back there. He's uh, 25 yards. Six inch popper, about the same. Okay. 30. You aiming at the bottom of the plate? I was aiming at the center. Forty seventy-five. Hmm. Where was it hitting for you at seventy-five? Low? A little low, yeah. Did you aim cheat, high? Cheat the upper upper third of the plate. Oh wow. Huh. That thing's hitting way, way off. Yeah, but see how those rounds are favoring to the right for you? Well, well not really. They're kind of all over the place on this big gong. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. They're, they're everywhere. <laughs> it is what it is, guys. <laughs> all we can do is show what we see. <laughs> Got 
it's really hard to get a good solid like purchase on this thing because that grip is just huge i mean that's just yeah. for our hands but you got to think it's getting warm too well it's getting definitely warm for sure but yeah i'm i am no fan of that safety at all it just seems like that thing right there would just go get on out of there all right maybe even another mag or so i got you Hang i mean here. you're out shooting me here <laughs> i I usually shoot a little bit faster. No, that's okay, man. But, I mean, guys, I mean, the, the gun seems fairly capable, but, I mean... Your mileage may vary. Yeah, I, I I definitely wouldn't buy it as, like, a range toy or anything like that. I'd much rather have a classic, like, German 226 or something along those lines to take out and shoot like we've shown in the past. Um, but I, I just don't really know... I don't really know what the what the uh, intended market for, for this gun is, really. You know? It's just- I mean, it's, it'd be one thing if they were 389. Yeah, I don't know. They're, they're a little bit too close to the cost of a normal SIG, in my opinion, especially even some of the, um, like I said, some of the classic guns. I mean, I just, I wouldn't pick it over a classic SIG any day of the week, no way. But, seems to be, I mean, functionally, the thing's great. As a home defense piece, maybe, you know, in a lot box or something like that. Hmm. I mean, it'll send them in there for sure. I'll do what it'll need to do. Let's see. All right, 12 yards. Hmm. I mean, if you wrap them out of there, it seems like. I'm gonna have one more mag. I'm gonna wrap it out and then be done. You're, you're, you're shooting faster than I can load. I need two mag fairies. <laughs> need more mags. <laughs> but yeah. I mean, cool gun overall, but probably not one that I would just go out and pick up, like I said. Me either. So, we just like showing them off. Yeah, we've been getting uh, quite a few requests from people to, to yeah. shoot this gun. So, here you go. Thank you. Ooh, yeah. yeah. And like I mentioned earlier, this particular ammo, whatever it is, the overall length on it, it was not liking Glock mags one bit. Seems to work in that though. Seems to like it. All right, let's wrap see. them out, dude. Not terrible. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed this look at uh, the Rex Zero One here. Uh, it is an interesting gun. I mean, just a European clone of a very popular uh, pattern of handgun for sure. Um, is it? better than you know a factory sig i i wouldn't say so uh, a few of the minor little quirks with it just they don't really inspire a whole lot of confidence but i mean we didn't really have any sort of malfunctions but the longevity of some of these parts on here has me a little bit concerned like i said just the the flex the flex that it has in some of these steel components here especially on the decocker and the slide lock itself there not really, uh, not really a fan of that one bit. Not a fan of the safety. I'd like to see it maybe just as a double single action only would be um, my preference. Uh, like Eric said, the grip is quite large and substantial. Um, it's difficult to get a really good purchase on the gun. I'd like to see maybe a little bit more uh, grippy texture on the rear of the frame here. Um, the the gun was kind of riding up in my hand just a little bit. I feel like I could use a little bit more purchase on, especially for a defensive piece. Uh, the rail is a nice feature. I mean, you know, for its design and how much contact that slide has with the frame, I would expect it to be maybe a little bit more accurate. I mean, we don't usually shoot pistols from a rest or, you know, even like the hog saddle like I did before, but you guys know we've been out here with guns like the Mark 23 and the CZ 75s, the SP01 Tacticals and things like that. And those guns just pit the ace. So to come out here and fire the same ammunition that we usually use and not really see the same results, uh, like I said, it doesn't really inspire a whole lot of confidence, but the gun might not be as accurate as some other guns, but you know, the dependability is there, the reliability of it, 
uh, you know, the long run is to be determined, but not too bad. But we just want to give you guys this kind of look at this interesting gun that we've been getting a lot of requests on, and uh, hopefully you'll stay tuned. We have a lot more stuff on the way, handguns, military surplus, firearms facts, gun gripes, all sorts of manner of things uh, that we do videos on. If you guys are new to the channel, consider subscribing. Make sure you ring that bell so you're getting notified when we upload a new video. And uh, until next time, guys, take care. We'll talk to you soon.